I'm Kate from We Roll With It, and today I'm going to take you on an extended tour of our full time home and rig, Bruce Banner. started his life as a two-wheel drive cargo sprinter, 170 extended. He was originally white. Bruce has a full body exterior coating by Linex The Coast. Um, it's in olive drab green and black. The Linex gives him a protected coating against scratches from bushes and also from rocks flying up from the trail. Bruce has a solid axle swap. He has a Dana 60 front, a Dana 70 rear and an Atlas 3 transfer case. He has old school hub lockers so we can turn our 4x4 on when we need it. He has Black Rhino Armoury wheels. He has Falcon MT tyres, which are 37, 13, 50s. With the solid axle swap, Bruce now has an extra height of eight and a half inches compared to the stock sprinter where he began. He also has four and a half inches on each side of extra track. The fender flares are fiberglass and they were custom made to fit these wheels in. Bodywork was cut out to fit the wheels and allow them to turn and also the def tank was lifted up and forward to give more room. Up front we have the backwards Adventure Mods front bumper. It is the Nomad series and it has a 12,000 pound winch on board. We've also got a bunch of recovery gear from Factor 55 here. The lights are from Pathfinder, they're LED and they're here, here and they're also up on top of our uh, Backwards Adventure Mods roof rack. This is the first roof rack that Backwards Adventure Mods has ever done. We have the Terror Wagon Snorkel which allows us with the pre-filter to get clean air into our engine. We chose the flip out style windows so that we can have uh, air coming in when it's raining and still not get any rain inside the rig. Let's go up the backwards adventure mods ladder and check out what's upstairs. Up on the roof rack we have three Rome Adventure Co boxes. This stores all our off-season gear. We have a high lift jack and one max air fan. We have 375 watts of solar. We have our max tracks, we have two rugged radio antennas, and our truck WeBoost, which we can stand up when we want to have extra service. This is a Thule awning. We have upgraded leaf springs to carry the extra weight on board from Agile Off-Road. It has a Fox shock system with reservoir and a custom airbag suspension with adjustable ride height from Sprinter Pit Stop. This is our shore power plug if we want to plug in, and also if we want to add an extra solar panel, we can plug that in here. On the back here, we have the Backwoods Adventure Mods rear bumper with toolbox carrier and spare tire carrier. We have to modify the spare tire character, uh, carrier to make it a little bit bigger to fit our wheels on. Back here we have plenty of storage for toys and gear. We have mounts for mountain bikes or Cab Motor Works EMX bikes which we normally carry on board. Inside here, to rig our power system and we have 600 amp hours of lithium battery in a Victron system. On this side we have 40 gallons of fresh water and our Rickson heating system which does our hot water and our hot air all running off diesel. This is where we fill our water and put the fresh water in here and when you want to use the outdoor shower or outdoor wash down, we have a screw in that plugs in here. This is the tap and the mixer, and this turns our water pump on. This turns the lights on inside the garage, and this turns the lights on on the back doors. We have a full package of Turig storage bags on board. These are the larger ones. Small pocket bags, large, tall, and long. At the back of the garage there, you can see our MB Quart subwoofer. It's a subwoofer that you can mount flat to a, to a wall and you don't need to put a box around that subwoofer so it's great for saving space in the ends. Up here we have the Turig First Aid Kit. It pops off of the wall and is a quick mount so you can access it really quickly. It has a bunch of stuff inside it. Dead Man Off-Road Recovery Gear. Bed is two panels and can be removed if you need. We have the complete package of bug screens from Turig. This is the rear one. Just that middle section there drops down if you want to cover the uh, garage area. And there's MB Quartz speakers in the rear doors. We have onboard air and we have chucks at the rear and the front of the vehicle so that we can log into that and pump up our tires, air down, or also pump up 
uh, any kind of water toys that we have, like paddle boards and stuff. Because Bruce's tyres are so big, we have extended the width of the slide door rail there. That way, when the slide door opens, we can clear the wheels. We have backwards adventure mod side steps which are great for getting in and out of an extra tall vehicle like this and really complement the design of the Sprinter. Something fun with all these mods, we decided to take Bruce's number from a 2500 to a 5500 and you'll find he's the only one of his kind. As you step on board from outside the sliding door, you'll find that our light switches are located here and here. There's two of them, one for the front and one for the rear, both on dimmer switches. Down here, we have the switches that turn on the stereo when the vehicle is not running. So that's for the indoor stereo and we also have an outdoor stereo which is mounted underneath the van. The outdoor stereo is MB Quartz speakers and they're the marine speakers so that they can survive getting wet or muddy or anything like that. Right here is where the warm air comes out and we have our Rickson heater running which warms up the cabin wonderfully. The interior of Bruce was built up by Turig in Golden, Colorado and we have the Turig exclusive airliner cabinets up here. They're made of aluminum so they're very lightweight locking latches so that nothing comes out as we're driving along. Underneath the overhead cabinet we also have two more lights, overhead lighting and under cabinet lighting. Again both on dimmers. In front we have the shielding seats. They are on the alpine mechanism swivels which means we can put them forward, flip this switch at the back and lagoon table which can swivel into position. And the settee is custom upholstered, but we managed to get the same fabric as the Shulman seats so that we could match them. Welcome to the kitchen. In here we have the Wabasto diesel cooktop. Its operations are here. So you have a little on off switch. And if it's high altitude, you can pop it on there. This is your temperature. This runs on diesel, which is connected to the main tank. We have our sink, Rivadi and full stand-up stainless steel shower. Dometic toilet. This is where we turn the water on up front. Same as the button in the back, it just turns the um, pressure on and we can see how much we have left in our tank here. This is the heating system. So we can turn on the hot air or the hot water as needed. Fan on high and low and system on and off. We have the isotherm freezer and fridge. 65 liter freezer, 85 liter fridge. Here's the max air fan from the inside. You have your on off and power switches here, up and down. Also have two marine DC fans, which you can move around. And your switches for on and off are here at the back. Same one up the front. Timer or on and off three different levels. Full king size bed in the back. You sleep north south. And at the back there you also have some reading lights from RE Global LumaCoin lights. The ceiling lights are also LumaCoin. We have the Turig window covers here and they attach with magnets at the top and the bottom. This is the control system for in-house. This is how we turn the heat up and down. This will show us all of our power and what's going on so we can see how much battery we have, whether it's coming from the AC if we're plugged in or if it's coming from the solar panel here. We can also see how much power we're drawing. So currently I've got the light and fan on and the fridges so we can see some DC power draw here. If I were to plug something into the AC we'd see something come up there. When we want to charge up or run an AC appliance we have to turn the inverter to on but when we're not running any AC we keep it off to save power. In the second cabinet along, we have the switch which turns our Wii Boost on and off. And in the first cabinet, we have the fuse box. So if anything goes out, this is the first place we check. Check the fuses and usually that's the problem. All right, welcome to the cockpit. Up here, we have the S-Pod. And this controls all our lighting, air compressor and things like that. Alpine head unit. This monitor here is monitoring our auxiliary battery which is under the hood. USB outlets and a DC port there, on off switch. Here's the air right. This controls the left and right rear airbags. 
so we can make them go up or down depending on how much load we're carrying. We can even use that to level ourselves out at campgrounds. This is what's connected to the Atlas transfer case. We have front and rear, low, neutral and high, low, neutral and high. This is how we get into our four-way four mode. On the doors here again we have some more Turug pockets, Turug soft cup holders and here is where we look after our auxiliary fuel tank. So we can see what we have here by turning it on. So we've got a quarter of a tank and we can send fuel to the auxiliary fuel tank or from the auxiliary fuel tank up to the main tank. So to the back and to the front. To fill up the auxiliary fuel tank, we just fill up our gas as per normal here. Then once this tank gets full, send it to the rear for the auxiliary. Then keep filling, simple. Also see the pedal box here, which we can change and adjust according to our likes. We have some communication up here. We have rugged radios on board. We have two. One is for long range with no obstacles. And this radio is better for short range, but where there is obstacles like trees or rocks in the way. All right, so this is our Dometic toilet. Um, it's pretty easy to use. It has a little clip here, which comes out and that mounts it onto the floor here in the shower. So that clip goes in there and that holds it in place while we're driving around and such. When we want to empty the toilet, we just undo that clip and undo the top section and take this section into the bathroom, flush it away. Top section gets filled with water and that's how you flush. There's a little pump action situation here. Pump that up. And then you've got a little flusher here. Put a little blue loo in here, and it's really not terrible. Inside the shower there, we've got another mixer and a wand. Full on board shower is a bit of a luxury. And you can see all of that there. Every so often we pull everything out, lift up the boards, just like that, and clean out anything in there. Up here is one independent light, this one doesn't this one operates on its own, so it's got its button there. Uh, again, it can dim if you just hold it down, and if you double click it, it'll turn red. Headliner shelf up here for storage. We put all our window covers and such in there. And there is one little button here, which will turn the light on up there. You can see everything that's up. Uh, this curtain is the two rig curtain. Comes across and slides, which can black us out if we're stealth camping. Two rig window curtains here. A little pull like that. Marvelous. And on the slide door, a full bug screen. Unclips there and zips down. All right, so now I'm underneath Bruce and there's some cool stuff down here to check out. Um, here you can see one of the MV Quart outdoor speakers. There's also another one further down and two on the opposite side facing this way. If I turn you around, you can see a grey water tank there, and that switch is where we empty grey water tank needed. That's the original fuel tank, and down the back there is the auxiliary fuel tank, where the spare tyre once would have been. And here we can see an upgraded braking system, which was put on so that his handbrake can hold the extra weight. And up there, on board air. Since Bruce is a big guy, he needed a big horn. So we upgraded him with an air horn, quite loud. You can get one of these installed by Sprinter Pit Stop. They did a really good job putting this one on. In the door entrance here, there's a sweet pocket for shoes. And we can also open up our door there to make a little table, which is great when we're barbecuing outside. So I hope you enjoyed touring Bruce Banner with me today. If there's anything I missed in this video and you have questions and want to ask me more things about Bruce, I'm always happy to answer. The best place to find me is on Instagram, at we roll with it. And you can see more of Bruce there, ask anything about the rig. I hope you enjoyed it. Until then, see you on the trails. I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, if you hadn't noticed, we do have an ebook that we sell, uh, and the link is just in the description. Uh, it contains 160 pages crammed full of practical advice, walkthrough information, electronic schematics, and part lists, which will make your job a lot easier for doing a van conversion and it will save you time and money. Also, we've created special videos for the ebook which enable you to see walkthroughs for how to do loads of things in the van conversion. So that's for water systems, for your electrics, for how to do simple woodwork joints that anyone can do. And I really believe that anyone, regardless of their experience, can make a half decent van conversion.
Thanks for watching. We really appreciate you watching our content and we put a lot of effort to make it interesting, informative and find those cool projects to feature on our channel. Consider subscribing, leave a comment and we'll see you next week.